Hey guys, welcome back to another very windy day here on the Mac Range. And today we want to talk about AR-15s and hunting medium-sized game animals or even up to larger sized game animals with the AR. And in my state of Indiana, we're not able to use 223 on deer. We have to use things over 243 in caliber. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. The AR-15, this one in 6.5 Grindle, but something you can pick up for less than a thousand bucks or even modify an existing rifle you already have. But before we get started with today's video, guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, please take a moment to consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There's a link in the video description below. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me. I answer all private communications, and there's some other perks as well. So please consider, again, becoming part of that Patreon family. Link down below. Also, if you enjoy the content, just take a moment to hit that like, share, subscribe button, and mash that notification bell. With all that being said, let's get started with today's video talking about the AR-15 and using it for medium to large size game. The biggest limiting factor of the standard AR-15 chambered in 5.56 is the 5.56 or 2.23 cartridge that it chambers. This little guy is a very popular military cartridge, very popular self-defense cartridge, but in terms of hunting, it was really designed, at least the 2.22, which it was based upon, was really intended for varmint hunting, small animals. It wasn't designed for big game animals or medium game animals. Now that's not to say you can't take a deer with a 223. I have in South Texas, I actually hunted deer with 223 before and 224 Valkyrie. And so it can be done legally in some states, but up north it's typically forbidden. And in our state of Indiana, it's not allowed. We have to use 243 or larger. And so 556, 223 is out if you wanna hunt deer or anything like that. Now there's other game animals in North America, bear, things like that, elk. I don't think I would go hunting elk with the cartridge I want to talk about next, but there are cartridges out there that extend the range and lethality of the AR-15 above and beyond what the 5.56223 can do. There's a bunch of different cartridges out there that have been developed, like 300 Hammer, which is really cool. Uh, you have 6.8 SPC, which was a result of the military looking for something to replace the 5.56, and then we have the 6.5 Grindle. And the 6.5 Grindle is a cartridge I became quite fond of. It has a lot of benefits. First of all, you can get, at least for now, affordable ammunition. Wolf brings in steel-cased ammunition in a 100-grain format, but they also bring in their gold line of 6.5 Grindle uh, that is brass-cased and still quite affordable. This stuff doesn't really cost much more than 223 to shoot, so you can go out and shoot your gun and enjoy it without spending a bunch of money. That's a big bonus for the 6.5 Grindle. But the 6.5 Grindle has other benefits to it as well, primarily the bullet, the bullet design, and the velocity. But one of the key things that engineers have to concern themselves with when developing a new cartridge for the AR-15 is staying within the constraints of the overall length of the 5.56 cartridge because we don't want to make the action larger. We don't want an AR-10 sized rifle. If we can do AR-10 sized rifles, I'm gonna use a 6.5 Creedmoor. We're trying to fit everything into a standard AR-15 M4 style rifle. And that's what 6.5 Grindle allows us to do. But again, there are other cartridges out there, 300 Blackout, stuff like that, that do the same thing. But the Grindle is one of my favorites. Now, what I have sitting out here are two bullets that are pulled. This is a Federal 55 grain 223, pretty standard. The bullet weights for 223 will range anywhere from 40 grain for varmint hunting all the way up to, I've seen loads that call for 112 grain bullets. I've never found any commercially available. The heaviest commercially available load I found for 223 is a 79 grain bullet, but it's not the bullet weight we have to worry, worry about with the states. Most of the states have rules based around the diameter of the bullet, so you can't use a 22 caliber bullet. That's where the 6.5 Grindle comes in. Now, if you take a look at the 6.5 Grindle next to the 5.56, the, 50, uh, the 55 grain bullet versus this 130 grain bullet, there's a significant size difference. Actually, this is a 123 grain Hornady Black load that I have pulled apart here. So this is, yep, 123 grains. So 123 grains versus 55 grains. But if you take a look at this bullet, it has a long body, a lot of bearing surface there for engagement with the rifling, really awesome ogive and a, a ballistic coefficient, at least in one of my favorite match loads. If you take a look at the Federal 130 grain Berger stuff, this has a ballistic coefficient of 0.56. That's a G1 ballistic coefficient. That's extremely high. So on, today's, on days like today, where we have a lot of wind out there, 
this thing's going to buck the wind far better than 5.56 or 223 would ever be able to do. And so that's pretty darn impressive. Now, I have a buddy that took a buck at 300 yards with a 6.5 Grindle. I've taken an Axis buck at about 125 yards with a 6.5 Grindle, but the Axis is much bigger than the deer that we have around here, and that 6.5 Grindle put it right down. Clean, ethical kill. It went down very quickly. I'll show you a picture of that animal. It's a beautiful animal. So anyway, the rifle that I have here in front of me is a rifle that I asked Primary Arms to send to me. I asked them, find the most affordable 6.5 Grindle that you offer in your store, and I would like to see that, and then pick an affordable optic. The rifle that Primary Arms chose to send to me is the Radical Firearms rifle that you see here. Of course, it's chambered 6.5 Grindle. It has B5 furniture on it. Let me get my rear bag out of the way here. It has B5 furniture on it, so that's a stock and pistol grip. It has a standard mil-spec upper and lower, standard mil-spec charging handle, forward assist, standard mil-spec controls, but it does have an AMB selector lever on the right-hand side of the gun. Moving out here, we have an M-lock rail section. It has a Picatinny rail across the top. We have M-lock rails at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions on this handguard. It has a 16-inch stainless steel barrel. It is a heavier profile barrel. It's not a pencil weight barrel. It's a, it looks like about a medium uh, profile barrel for the 6.5 Grindle. Again, it's 16 inches in length, and then it comes with this muzzle device on the end. So the entire rifle that you see here is $7.99 at Primary Arms. So that is an affordable rifle. Now, if you want to get into 6.5 Grindle, you have an extra AR-15 laying around in 5.56. You can get online and order a barrel and a bolt and simply re replace those two components, and you'll have a 6.5 Grindle AR-15. That's really cool as well. But let's focus on somebody that wants to pick up a deer rifle as an AR-15 and do so on a budget. $7.99 for this rifle. On top, Primary Arms sent me one of their budget line optics. This thing is less than $100. If you buy any Primary Arms optic from their website, you'll either get a free scope mount, and this is the free scope mount that you would receive if you ordered this scope, or if you order a, uh, a, a, an optic that has an integrated uh, mount on it, I was going to say rail, if it had an integrated mount on it, then they'll give you a free Kill Flash ARD. So, we have less than 100 bucks in the scope, 7.99 in the rifle, the whole thing, 900 bucks to go deer hunting using a very effective cartridge in the AR-15. And if you haven't shot a 6.5 Grindle, I really highly recommend that you do it because you can do so with the affordable factory ammunition that Wolf brings in, either the steel case stuff that I have here or their gold line with the brass case stuff. And then you can also pick up a wide variety of match and hunting ammo that's out there. It's, a, it's widely supported. It's become a mainstream cartridge, whereas, you know, a few years ago, it was still one of those cartridges that people didn't know if it was going to take off or not. It's taken off. So now let's do a little bit of shooting with this rifle. And the thing that I love most about 6.5 Grindle is that it really doesn't change how the gun feels when you shoot it. It's not a, a lot of recoil. It doesn't reco recoil any much, or it doesn't recoil much more than a standard 5.56 really, especially if you have a muzzle device on it. I've suppressed them successfully. They suppress great. Just use a 30 caliber can. This gun does have a 5.8 by 24 thread on it, which would be common for 6.5 Grindle. But yeah, let's do a little bit of shooting with it because these are really pleasant rifles to shoot. And the Radical Firearms rifle has been delivering the goods. We will not be able to put up a target downrange because it just keeps getting blown over by the wind, but we will paint up a target and a freshly painted target and we'll do some shooting with it to give you an idea of how this thing will group. It's more than capable of taking deer at range. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so now we have a target set up at 100 yards. It's a challenge steel target. There's a single bullet hole in the face. That's going to be my aiming point. We're unable to put paper targets up today because the wind is just horrendous once again so paper targets are just getting blown over the primary arms optic they have on here for a less than a hundred dollar scope is pretty nice in terms of the features you have quarter moa click adjustments for both elevation and windage you can zero the turrets out once you're done and then you have your magnification adjustment right here it's a three by nine so you have three on the low end and nine on the high end in terms of magnification. The ocular side, you can adjust the focus. There is no side focus or parallax adjustment on the end of the scope. It's not needed. This is a traditional duplex style scope that's been used for 100 years or more by people for deer hunting. The reticle on this is not a precision reticle. The reticle is fairly coarse. The crosshair is fairly coarse. It's not a super fine line. 
but it's more than enough to do what it's intended to do, and that's to deliver a kill shot on an animal. All right, so we will be shooting five rounds of this Federal 130 grain Berger stuff. Federal does supply this ammunition free of charge to the channel. We'd like to thank them for doing that. It's a tremendous help. All right, so we have that one bullet hole down there in the face of the target, the challenge target. And we're gonna use that as an aiming point for the next five. All right, so that gives you an idea of how the gun shoots. Again, the recoil impulse on the 6.5 Grindel is very, very mild. It's not like anything like a 308 or anything like that. So if you're used to shooting a 5.56, five, you're going to feel right at home behind the rifle once it's chambered in 6.5 Grindel. A lot of fun, and at range, this thing really starts to shine. And so much more so than the 5.56, five, of course, does. I know there are many different cartridges out there available for the AR-15 if you want to use it for hunting, but the 6.5 Grindel is one of my favorites. It has a large variety of ammunition made by all the top manufacturers out there and even some boutique shops, so you have plenty of ammo to choose from, and the rifles are readily available and affordable. Of course, if you already have an AR-15 you want to convert it to 6.5 Grindel, you can do that by swapping out the barrel and the bolt, or if you're on a budget you want to pick up a rifle in that that's chambered for that particular cartridge, you can do so on a budget for $799 for this Radical Firearms rifle that I requested PA send to me. Also, if you're on a budget, this 3x9 scope seems to be a solid option, but there are plenty of other scopes out there that are available. Even Primary Arms offers scopes that get up into the $1,500 price range. It just depends on how much money you want to spend and what your budget is. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you've got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.